Hi and welcome to The Razor's Edge. This is Paul. Tonight I'm interviewing James Sharples, editor of the latest heavy metal publication, Fistful of Metal, which launched its first issue in October 2020. You okay? I'm really good, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah? I've got a beer. I've got a couple of beers. Um, and uh, That sounds making, okay to me. Yeah, in the midst of lockdown. Yes, part indeed. Seven or whichever part we're <laughs> to at this point. Brilliant. So it's great to talk to you, and, and thanks for spending a bit of time with me. It'll be uh, be really interesting to, to find out a little bit more about the magazine. Um, yeah, not a problem at all, man. Grand, thanks. Let's start a little bit about you. Um, what's your background, and how did you end up as editor of uh, Fistful of Metal? Oh, God, no one wants to know that. <laughs> Concisely, <laughs> then. <laughs> Um, well, uh, started off playing in bands as a kid, yep. then decided I should probably look at doing something that might actually work for a career rather than, uh, playing in, in really, really, really bad metal bands. So, um, yeah, just, uh, did a, uh, college course in, uh, in journalism, but started off working at local papers and then, uh, ended up working for for uh, part time for a magazine called Big Cheese, yeah. which was uh, yeah, sort of skate punk mag in the oh, God, how bad is it? I can't remember. <laughs> I think it was maybe the late nineties. Yeah, um, it, it was when everyone was still wearing baggy jeans. Right. Okay. So uh, yeah, around about then, I think, and then um, we. Uh, uh, I went. I went full time there. Yeah. And uh, work working for the the publishing company, and um, then we started another magazine called Viva the Rock, which is sort of like a, a classic punk mag, I suppose, like like classic rock but for punks. Yeah. And um, just sort of gone on from there, really, and then decided during <laughs> during a global pandemic. Hey, what better time to launch the, uh, the magazine? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, two issues out now. The second one landed on the mat last week, and we'll talk about yep. how you get your content and stuff in a bit. Mm-hmm. You you mentioned obviously you started a, a physical magazine in the middle of a global pandemic, which sounds yeah, you know, of all the ideas in the world, it's up there with opening a restaurant or trying to run a music venue, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So, yeah. Wh- where did the, where did the the seeds for a new heavy metal magazine come from? Given the market that is there at the moment is potentially, I wouldn't say saturated, but there are quite a few magazines around, aren't there? True. Um, I think it was it was mainly um, me and a few mates. Like we 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 used to sort of you know, meet up, obviously pre global pandemic yeah. to um just just get pissed on really cheap red wine from Sainsbury's and listen to records actual records I mean not you know streams or CDs yeah and uh, and just talk shit about music really primarily uh, the heavier end of things mm-hmm. and um we just kind of we just wanted a, a magazine version of that really it sort of spun out of doing um zooms and and just thought why not yeah you know it's the music we love mm-hmm. and plus uh none of us are getting any younger <laughs> and there's perhaps maybe not not so many not so many uh not so many titles for us sure you know? sure uh, and and just wanted something that was um you know not sort of gatekeeper-y, if you see what I mean. No, yeah, something I do. That would, yeah. That, some of them would be a bit, or you know, a bit more inclusive. It's just, you know, yeah. There, there, there is no best Iron Maiden album. They're all fucking great, like that, that kind of thing. Yeah. And it's, you know, I'm <laughs> never look down on somebody because they don't, you know, they can't name ten underground <laughs> bands from <laughs> sure. a small town in Sweden. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. So, I assume that, given your background and you you've obviously got a bit of uh, background and some some knowledge about how the 
how the actual publication world works. What kind of market research did you actually do in terms of working out kind of, I think your your initial print run was, was it 15,000, something like that, that you aimed for? Was yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. So what what were the uh, the kind of research factors that you, you looked into to say this could be a goer? If I'm honest, sod off. <laughs> Really? <laughs> okay. Um, it was it was just more that you know, there's people people like me and my mates. You know, we we go to bloodstock each year. Yeah. And, you know, and and since God bless it, terrorizer disappeared. You know, there, there's not really anything for us to say that you know we we wanted to you know want to read about I don't know say Uriah Heap as much as we do about you know. Uh, dark throne yeah and yeah yeah there, there wasn't you know but and at the same time wanting to listen to sort of newer bands like you know spirit adrift and and bands like that that you sure. know there, there is there wasn't really anywhere for us to get all of that stuff in one place yeah for one price sure sure i was um listening to a podcast with with miles hackett of bmg recently um, oh, I know. I know Miles very well. He was yeah. the, he was the best man at my wedding. Oh, actually. brilliant! Well, he was he was on um, Howard Smith's Talking Bollocks, and I think the interview was actually recorded way before issue one came out. But it was only released. Mm. It was only aired a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about the fact that he was talking about the magazine. He was actually saying that the the target audience, if there is one, was the kind of Bloodstock fan, if you like, the person that goes to Bloodstock every year. Now you've just kind of giving me the answer but is is that kind of where you were looking at uh, oh 100 percent. i i absolutely love bloodstock it's it's well actually it's probably on par with say damnation as yeah my my favorite uk festivals it's just there's never any judgment at uh at bloodstock mm -hmm. everyone is lovely musically it's it's across the board but there's a common thread yeah, you know, I I love that you could you know you could go and see Watain at one point and you know D Snyder the next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I I have learned over the years to stay away from the old rosy side of the list. So that's a, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible move. One one I make each year. In in fairness. Yeah, normally on the Thursday, I would imagine, is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Been there, done Been, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, that's that's one hundred percent. It is sort of you know, it's, it's hopefully you know the bloodstock crowd dig it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll come on to the feedback in a minute. I just wanted to ask you as well, I, um, the team that you've got involved in it. So you obviously got quite a range of writers. I mean, in the mm -hmm. latest issue, you've got everyone from I think Dom Lawson pops up, and you've got Ian Glaceber who's been around Chris Needs has been around for a, a good while and then there's a couple of guys that uh I used to write with when I wrote with, with power play like Bruce and Steve Swift and people like that. So how did you get course, the team yeah. how did you get the team together? Were they, were they uh, all people that you knew? Yeah, it's just it's just basically people that we know and um uh through through a few of us, just that sort of small sort of network. Yeah. Like, um Oh, I should also add, we, we also do another magazine called Down for Life, which is uh, sort of more of a hardcore crossover kind of stuff. Yes, yeah. And uh, that that's where we uh, we got to know Ian. And, right, um, yeah. Chris Needs uh, has, has written for the Rock Rock for many years, same as uh, Jerry, who uh, did the Uriah Heap piece in the latest issue. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's all just sort of, um, which isn't to say it's, you know, it's not a closed circle where you know we're we're always looking for more writers more photographers mm -hmm. sure so as i as i said i as i said i wrote for power play for a couple of years mm. up until actually the uh the kind of strange comments that were made at the beginning of the year late last year with with the 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 um uh yeah, yeah I, did, the, I did i did see that and it's probably best to comment on yeah, it yeah we'll move on from that but I, obviously yeah. that's that's got a that publication has a very different target audience much although they do cover the 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 heavier side of the genre it's it's very much they're focused on the the lighter side of music 
Um, you've, you've covered it a little bit in terms of how you decide on the range of artists that you want to feature. And I'm looking at issue two, I was reading it earlier on, and you, the, the, the features run Tribulation, Uriah Heap, Mordred, Cannibal Corpse, which is a fairly widespread, but <laughs> still, with the exception of Uriah Heap, probably bands that are not what you would call mainstream metal, but certainly have big followings. Where are you looking at in terms of your outer limits, in terms of who you would kind of want to include? Is it literally people that you as a group enjoy listening to, or where, um, where do you there, plan there, with that? There, there, is, there is a fair part of that. Um, yeah. there, there is sort of a... a uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll just call it the committee, uh, <laughs> for, for want of a better term. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are certain things that we have been pitched that we've just immediately knocked back. Um, not necessarily even because we don't personally like them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, there, there, there have been some bands that we've covered that I, I'm not a fan of, uh, you know, say particular subgenres. Yeah. Um, but I love that people do love that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I love that people are totally fanatical about it. That's great. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm not going to come out and just be like, oh, it's you know, it's crap. It's just you know, it's just not for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there there are certain things that we have not um, not back with a quickness, just because we don't. It, 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 it's more it's more of a uh, of a gut feeling more than anything. Yeah. And I, I get the feeling that what you're also trying to do is stay away from um, certain types of rock and metal that is is well covered. So obviously, Prog has its own magazine. Classic mm. Rock has its own magazine. Metal Hammer has its Slipknots and Five Finger Death Punches and Avenged Sevenfolds and all that kind of thing, which is a bit more mainstream. So I, I really appreciate the fact that you are running interviews and articles on on bands that are are important to many people but not maybe the arena bands if you like yeah oh well thank you very much i appreciate the uh the compliment um and yeah i, I totally get what you say um although i will give metal hammer you know props for the most sort of recent issue with uh i think it was uh, a bunch of different covers i think they did alien weaponry um I can't remember who else off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I think Twin Temple. Yeah. Um, on on Rise Above Records, and that was that was kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 took a punt with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but but yeah, I I, I I get I get what you're saying. Um, we, yeah, there's there, there are certain things that we will sort of uh, avoid, and it, it has nothing to do with. Um, I kind of hate that sort of, you know, oh, this is a cool band. I've always hated that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, you know, I, I, I got turned on to, to a lot of power metal from... Uh, do, you, do you remember those Nuclear Blast... Um, I think it's videotapes and DVDs where it's yeah. like the compilation thing. Of, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I can't remember the name of them. But um, but uh, I think it was... Uh, yeah, I remember what you... I can't remember what they were called, but I remember them, yeah. And there were so many bands on there that was just sort of thinking like, okay, this is a bit daft, but it's brilliant. Yeah. And you know, it might not be deemed cool, but it's just you know, I mean, I I, I still love Manowar. I, I yeah. still love Halloween. Mm-hmm. Still love Hammerfall. You mm-hmm. know. But at the same time, I'll, I'll listen to you know, uh, Thou or uh, the Body, and you know. Yeah, yeah. It all sort of feeds into one thing, you know. Yeah. Well, one of the best. One of the best times I've ever had in the 11 years ago into Bloodstock was being slightly the worst for wear watching Freedom Call on the Sophie stage <laughs> and laughing my ass off from start to finish at the ludicrous thing that was involving in, evolving in front of me. But yet, yeah, when you look back, there was four of us absolutely drunk as skunks, but having an absolutely brilliant time. And then, of course, exactly. every time Freedom Call turn up we think ah oh, we'll go and watch them because we've got that memory they're always shit yeah. but... <laughs> <laughs> so i mean what but... other genre of music is there where you can get all this sort of variety from seriousness to outright hilarity absolutely yeah i mean i think that's why we all live it isn't it 100 mm. percent. so the interesting thing for me was was obviously 
you're not covering huge amounts of classic rock bands because there mm. is a magazine, as, as we said. And yet, you've obviously had Motorhead on the cover of the first one, Sabbath on the cover of the second one, and you've got a really, really good article interview with Uriah Heep, who've been kicking around for 50 years, in, in issue two. Mm. Which is great, because you're actually giving exposure to... A, a couple of bands that people know, but the the like an interview with Bill Ward is not something you hear. Um, you don't get interviews with Bill Ward, do you? Very often. No, and that was that was a very uh, <laughs> that was very seat of the pants whether whether it was all going to come off. <laughs> fairness, or whether he could I, uh, remember uh, anything my, my by the reading of it. Mm. Yeah, but the other thing that was interesting for me, which as, as editor, which is one of the things I wanted to come on to, is is your actual role as editor whether it is a formal role, it obviously is in some respects. But obviously you've done the interview with Ken Hensley before he actually, a couple of weeks before he passed away, which was mm. three months ago or so. And then you obviously have to run the article, which I thought was brilliantly sensitively handled. Did you have any issues to deal with before you actually re- thought about how you were going to run that article? How did you chew it through? Uh <sighs> To be honest, I didn't. I I trust the people that write for me. Yeah. You know, and uh, well, for example, the the Uriahi one, like, you know, Jerry's been at this at this particular coal face for a a very long time. Yeah. And you know, there's uh, there's never any sort of from my side of things, I don't guide people, and unless perhaps maybe it's uh, someone that's never written before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, <laughs> all the people that write for us are grown ups, and uh, you know, if they can't sort of exercise judgment and sensitivity when when it it needs to be, yeah, uh, then that would be kind of worrying <laughs> more than anything. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was that was a weird thing with with Ken as well, like um, well, and uh, Lee I, Lee as well, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it's just. Uh, it's worrying that you reach a certain age when your, your heroes start dying off. Yeah, is, uh, absolutely. Yeah, something that... Sure. So, so tell me a little bit more. I mean, the the role of editor sounds very grand. I'm sure it's <laughs> nothing no, like it's that. Not at all. No, it's not at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, I, uh, uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of... How to describe it? I mean, a lot of it is just uh, is organisational. Yeah. Um, making making sure uh, you know everything comes together mm-hmm. and um, answering <laughs> any uh, any complaints and problems. <laughs> um, but other than that, for the most part, you know, we, we there's like I said earlier when I referenced the uh, the, the somewhat shadowy mysterious committee. Yeah. Um, you know, we we decide what's going to go in there, uh-huh. uh, allocate certain amounts of space, and um, and then just uh, bring bring writers in. Like uh, maybe sometimes they'll they'll be a, uh, a a potential writer that's got in touch and perhaps hasn't ever done an interview before. Yeah, and I'll 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 sort of talk them through. Which is probably a terrible idea. Thinking about it, <laughs> don't do what I do, kids. That's a really bad, bad move. Um, yeah, yeah. Mind I have to say it's very weird being on the other side of it. I'm, uh, I'm still getting used to that. I'm sure. Yeah. With, uh, after all that with, with things like this. Yeah. But uh, but but yeah, for the most part, it's it's just um, uh, it's just putting things together, really. Sure. Um, okay. That's, that's fine. It might, it might it might sort of expand, perhaps yeah. as as we go on. Um, but at the moment, to be honest, I'm kind of loving how simple and straightforward it is. Brilliant. It's uh, it's very much just like we love this stuff. This is happening. Yeah. Let's do a thing about it. Done. Great. Sounds brilliant. Cool. So let's talk about the uh, the issue one. You did that kind of. Uh, almost like a teaser kind of social media campaign where we we knew something was coming and there was this kind of 
would you be interested? Do you want to register all this kind of thing? And I'm assuming mm. that quite a lot of people did. I certainly did. And I know a couple of people that did. Well, thank you very much. Was the, appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, was the response... As you Did you have an expectation for the response? And if so, or, or, or um, what was the response like? Well, I kind of had... Um, I know what metalheads are like, being one myself, and I know how much that they they will support something that actually looks like it gives a shit. Yeah. So, on one hand, I wasn't overly surprised, mm-hmm. but on the other hand, it's just like, wow, this is this is awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's something about the physical for a metal fan. You know, we love our vinyl. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I mean, I, you know, for example, I have a Spotify account, yeah, which I sort of almost use like a. Do you remember those uh, the sort of the the R Price Virgin Mega Store listening posts? Yes. I use it for that, yeah. And then I'll yeah. buy the physical product. Yeah. And it's the same. The same with same with magazines. You know, I I, I still I still buy Iron Fist. Um, you know, and I I still buy metal zines. Yeah. Sure. Just just having a physical product, it's. Uh, I think as well, perhaps people don't really want to pay for a, a digital format of things. I mean, no. sp- speaking for myself, I can't. I can't remember the last time I bought like a download. No, I agree. Something. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I don't even buy books to read on a Kindle or anything. They've got to be physical. Oh well, I I kind of yeah. Okay, I've. I've I, I'm going to be hoist by my own patal now, but uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I get through a lot of books on Kindle. But at the yeah. same time, if I love it, I'll buy a uh, a physical version to keep as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, case in point, I'm I'm rereading the Dark Tower okay. series at the moment, the Stephen yeah. King books. So, mm-hmm. you know, I've, it's just kind of handy to to read on Kindle. Yeah, um, oh, I understand that. But but I own them. <laughs> Yeah, I am. I'm still a proper fan. Well, I read. Um, I'm a huge Rush fan, and that when Clockwork Angels came out, I had it on on um, my iPad or my Kindle or whatever it was at the time. Mm. And then, of course, realised that shit. I'm a Rush fan. I've got to have a physical copy. Um, if you could see my, I'm in my office now. If you could see behind me, there's a whole row of books all about Rush that I've bought in the last two or three years I just keep buying and (laughs) these bastards keep putting them out you know (laughs) that's where you fall into the trap absolutely (laughs) so so the reception for the 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 initial interest in it was good and was the actual um response once you'd got issue one out what was that like it was it was pretty fucking great to be honest yeah um it's uh yeah it's it's just it's it's really humbling to to tell the truth um that you know sometimes as a journalist you you feel like you uh you put stuff out and uh it's like it's just gone into the void yeah you know and uh, it can feel a bit like i mean i've you know i've been doing this for a long time now it can feel a bit like you're on a conveyor belt or mm. um <laughs> do you remember the game lemmings oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, kind of a bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, you know, none of your lemmings make it over the cliff face. They all they all just fall down. Um, that's what sometimes it felt like with, uh, with the projects I do. Whereas now it's, it's, it's great. It's um, actually having it like I, I, me, myself, I make a point of uh, replying to every person that gets in touch on, um, on social media yeah you know whether it's good or bad you know uh-huh. and, and, and thankfully fingers crossed touch where there have not been really any bad things sure. um <laughs> apart, <laughs> apart from the occasional thing of people asking me to get in touch with the band and ask why they won't play brazil that's, uh, <laughs> that's all <laughs> sure. i thought i thought that was a meme but apparently it's a uh, yeah it's a it's a real thing. Um, so, 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 yes. Um, I mean, yeah, kind of difficult when it's you know they're talking about a band like Motorhead. Yeah, um, yeah. Probably not going to happen. 
I'll be honest. <laughs> sure. And you've touched on we, uh, the use of social media, which, of course, in some respects is is almost one of the main reasons why the the print market has shrunk so much. But mm. you guys are pretty adept at using it to engage and also to use it on a, a daily basis to post stuff which maintains the interest. So again, your use of social media, tell me about that and, and how you how you run it. Do you all do it or is it one of you or a couple of you? Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of us that yeah. do it. Um, uh, <laughs> you say we're adept at it. I, th- I think we're, we're sort of making it up as we go <laughs> for, the, for the most part. But I think that kind of adds to the charm a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's it's just. I mean, obviously, we we have a physical product that you know we're we're trying to sell. It's not you know purely altruistic. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's just sort of getting news things out there, and it's just. Uh, uh, mine recently, I, I somewhat regret uh, posting the new Cannibal Corpse video on there just before it was everyone's tea time. <laughs> um, I really hope not a lot of people clicked on. I hope they did click on it later. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I made that mistake. Um, spaghetti bolognese for tea after that video was not a good move. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. Sure, sure. And what about the actual impact of the pandemic on the team? Before you, you you've obviously, this is, you, you decided to go with it during the pandemic. So I assume you don't have, do you, do you have an office or anything? We do have an office in London, yeah, um, which is mainly for Viva La Rock. Ah, of course, um, yeah. I, I, I think nowadays, to be honest, you can kind of work from wherever. Yeah. Um, you just kind of need somewhere where you can ship out magazines. Uh, but for the most part, that's done through a mailing company, so that's sort of a yeah. completely different uh, location. But um, but yeah, we, yeah, we do have an office, um, which is it's. It's just full of CDs and old magazines at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, full disclosure as well. Like, um, I, I also pre pandemic do a lot of, um, videography for bands and, uh, festivals and things like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm traveling a lot anyway. Yeah. So I tend to, I tend to write, um, when I'm on the go. Mm-hmm. obviously this this past year is the exception yeah oh absolutely yeah i know i know how you feel um okay one of the other things i was thinking about when i was looking through the magazine is that you've you've decided with your album reviews to give them a score mm. which um is pretty standard stuff um and it's obviously based on the individual reviewer were you always decided to go for a a, a nice round ten as the, as the score. I know that like zero tolerance yeah. do a six, and various others do. Yeah, it's 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 uh, to be honest, it's always been kind of a bugbear for me with scores for reviews. Yeah, but, you know, at the same time, people tend to kind of like it. Um, I, 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 I pe- people are, are you know on on mass rather. Uh, yeah. I think it's probably just me being a miserable fucker that doesn't. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, but but also I, I think as well like bands and record labels kind of like it as well because it's just sort of quick like oh okay, you know this has got eight out of ten. Yeah, they obviously liked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, in, in an ideal world, I wouldn't I wouldn't have the scores on there, but. Sure. Uh, I mean, we we don't we don't score here at the Razor's Edge, but then, um, when I wrote for Power Play and also another another site that I write I write for, we we do score. So, it can be quite a challenge at times because you can start off the year thinking, "Wow, that's a nine, and then all of a sudden you get an eight, and you think, "Well, actually, that was better than the nine. Oh, bugger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I'd love having the the space in a, in a print title to sort of go back at the end of the year and re review a load of things. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and just sort of be like, actually, that that was a lot better than I thought at the time. Yeah. Um, God, I I I mean, this this is not metal based at all, but I, I remember I reviewed a uh, 
I think it was a Nick Cave album yeah. for Viva La Rock and absolutely kicked the shit out of it. And uh, then it was one of those ones where, you know, you sort of, you, you go away on holiday and you think, like, oh, just, you know, I'll put this on my, you know, save Spotify playlist, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, and re-listen to it. And it's just like, actually, that's brilliant. And I feel like a right cunt now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's forgiven you. <laughs> oh, he doesn't give a shit, does he? <laughs> I'm sure he does. Let's be honest. <laughs> so, issue two's come out. You, you're into a nice pattern now of, um, I think, is it is it going to be quarterly? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to keep it quarterly. I don't want to... I don't want to run before we can walk with mm-hmm. it. And uh, I think as well, like, price-wise, that's not... It's not too much for... You know, I I think like you know, best part of you know six quid a month would be too much to ask. But you know, sort of quarterly, it's not it's not too bad. No, no, I think it's it's very reasonable actually. But uh, so issue three, I'm assuming you're already well into planning for that. And uh, it's going. all it's all planned. Yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, d- definitely all planned. Uh, um, there's been a few arguments about certain things that are going in there, um, mainly from me arguing why they should go in there. <laughs> um, sorry, I can't tell you what they are. No, that's uh, fine. Don't spoil the fan. Now I've subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, fingers crossed. If everything comes off, it's going to be a great issue, and I've already planned. Uh, four five and six and part seven as well good grief wow so what are the only things that you can't plan i'm assuming that you are relatively ahead of the curve in terms of of new releases you've got an idea of what's coming out when yeah yeah i mean again that just goes back to you know sort of knowing people yeah. and um especially certain people that are experts in their field that mm-hmm. will you know be like oh well you know this is coming and I know you've probably never heard of it, but this is why we should do it. Uh, yeah. That kind of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, sort of some some things you can predict. I mean, when I say these issues are planned, it's uh, you know uh, the bones are there, yeah. And then you know we'll we'll sort of add the flesh, of course, a little bit close at the time. Yeah. Okay. Great. And. In time, obviously, the fingers crossed situation is that we'll be going back to some kind of live music. I don't know whether the oh god, can you can you imagine? Well, I, I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm slightly concerned about this sudden groundswell of enthusiasm that's happened this week. Yeah, where everyone suddenly seems to decide they've all bought a bloodstock ticket and all the rest of it. But um, I'm assuming that when you actually when the when the the gigs will do kick off you will start to look at including reviews of gigs as well oh 100 percent. yeah I mean, it's it's been kind of weird having to with issue one and two just sort of do like live stream reviews or classic gigs it's, it's yeah. very strange that that's the situation we're in yeah but i mean you know as, as a magazine reader I, I i've kind of always loved reading about live music well i think i think so, it's uh it's 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 really a, it's good fun to do live reviews when you write them, mm. because it's a slightly different challenge to writing a. You obviously you only have one shot at it for a start, don't you? You can't listen to it. You can't watch a live gig five times and then pick the bones out of it. You've <laughs> got to really go with what you what you remember, and depending on how yeah. you are at the gig, <laughs> it might not be a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be weird sort of getting back to that as well. Yeah, Great. I mean, I'm 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 hopeful that this year we 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 might get back to live music. Yeah, I really am hoping for that, but I, 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 it's too early to say. It's it's. I, I think. Yeah. No, I agree. We shall we shall see. Fingers crossed. Right. I mean, we we could we could all just do like the flaming lips, and uh, you know, we'll all turn up and in, in and in, in massive absorbing balls instead. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, not after a few ales. Oh God, no! I'd be day. I'd be in and out all the time. I'd need a bucket in there with me. <laughs> Brilliant. A couple of quick fire final questions, if you wouldn't mind, James, just to finish off. Sure. Yeah. Maybe yeah. a little bit more fun. So my first question is: Did you listen to the radio every Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> Do I really need to answer that? Good. Okay. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just yeah. I'm just going to go with yes. <laughs> so I want to know next: Who did you queue for a ticket for through the ice and snow? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I can tell you that. Um, I. I can. I can tell you exactly, literally, what band I queued for for a ticket in the ice and snow, and that was Ghost when they toured the UK. I think for the first. time time with Kajira yeah and I remember yeah. queuing outside in Birmingham yeah I think it was Birmingham was that Birmingham or Glasgow I did I did, did all the dates right and uh, just remember stood in snow <laughs> and ice I think it must have been Birmingham yeah yeah I remember that tour I saw him in Bristol so uh, yeah oh, I was there for that as well yeah, I, I I do I do love the Bristol Academy as well. Such a weird venue. Uh, I don't mind it until it gets too busy, and then I really struggle with it. Unless I'm up on the balcony, I don't like being down on the floor these days. I'm too oh far. no, because because that weird bit where you go in through the front. Yeah. And, uh, sorry, I realised I've just completely just kicked the teeth in on the quick questions there. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just sort of like when you when you go in through the foyer. Yeah. And then you go up through that main bit, and if yeah. it's completely round it's yeah. just like you're just stuck at those doors yeah yeah, it's, uh, yeah. i am um... it's awful but but <laughs> anyway sorry <laughs> it's all right no i, I shot i shot um opeth in there on their last tour and mm. for for three three songs i was like a pig in shit because i love opeth and i was right up front under michael ackerfeld's nose and then after the not, three, not literally. Well, almost, yeah. With my quite, Zoom, quite I was, yeah. <laughs> and after after the um, the three songs, obviously, I'm kicked out of the pit, and I ended up sitting on the bottom of the stairs because there was nowhere else for me to go. And I, I think oh, I yeah. I listened but couldn't see much of it. So, yeah, it was interesting. Okay, do you read a music paper from the back to the front or the front to the back? <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Um, I I could tell you a good Saxon story, but I'm I'm I I can't actually. I think legally. Okay, legally. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Move move moving on. From moving that, on. Okay, moving on. Yeah. What's your favourite Saxon song then? Uh, favourite Saxon song. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's really unfair. <laughs> well, good you three that's, Saxon that's... leadings. <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's just it's it's just really unfair. It's like picking one of my like you know kids if I had them. <laughs> um, gosh. Okay, give me a couple. I'll pr- no, I, no, actually, I'll probably go with uh, I'll probably go with Northern Lady. Okay. And uh, um, because my wife is one, so very good. Uh, she wouldn't she wouldn't let that be the. Uh, the first dance of a wedding, though, sadly. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and just finally, you've obviously got lots of stories which we can pick up another time, hopefully, but um, if there's one person that you'd really have liked to interview that you never have, either dead or alive, who would it be? Uh, are we are we talking just musically or anything? Physically? Any, physically, anyone, anyone, you know, just to interview, to sit down and talk for half an hour with. Okay, well, I'll go with two. I will go with Phil Liner. Yep. And Pol Pot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, the second one was a joke. I apologize. <laughs> please, please don't run that. <laughs> can I can I just retake that question? <laughs> uh, Phil Liner. I mean, I you know it's. Fucking thin, Lizzie, man. Yeah. Like, Magic. Brilliant. Just just tapping into that head would... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can totally see that. That's brilliant. James, it's been an absolute pleasure to have a chat with you, mate. Um, no, thank, thank you very much. It's a highlight of my week, mate. Appreciate it. 